This is the O Review Podcast. O Review. Hello, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to take a look at the sports frames which have been released in the beginning part of this year. So there's going to be three different ones. The first one is the FLAC 2.0, which I don't have here yet. And the FLAC 2.0 dropped the jacket designation, so it's not FLAC Jacket 2, it's just FLAC 2.0. And it comes in standard fit with only an XL lens, and then the standard lens only comes on Asian fit. So you can't get the Asian uh, fit with XLJ or XL lenses, and the standard fit with standard lenses. Alright, so next up is the Radar EV, which stands for Extended Vision, not Evolution, like I originally thought. And the main difference between this and the other radar is in the brow area. Extended vision um, kind of goes back to what they did with the tombstone, where they realized that peripheral vision was important, but also the vision up above, too. So seeing this bar above you, that sometimes can be distracting. So what they've done is they've added this hump here. Unlike the, um, the M-frame or the radar, which actually dips down and kind of makes that traditional M shape. So as such, the lenses for the EV will not fit the old radars and vice versa, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of frame colors or lens colors I wanted on the EV that haven't been around yet. At this point, they're going heavily on the prism for lenses, and then you have your basic uh, fire, sapphire, and then, of course, uh, clear and black and things like that. Uh, so what I've done here is I've taken the uranium collection frame, which is either listed as matte uranium or sometimes as sulfur, depending on what uh, sheet you get. On the website, it's matte uranium, but then on the sheet that comes back when you order it, it says sulfur. So, um, if you remember the Deuce Coupe, uh, Holbrook, and Frog Skin, those have the sulfur frame, so you can kind of get an idea of what that is. And this is basically just a matte version of that. Um, I have the Retina Burn socks on it, and then I added a fire lens on it. And just like the radar, it comes in the path lens, which has the upper arch here, and then the pitch lens, which kind of goes down a bit. It does not have a range lens nor does it have an edge lens for the female one. I believe that the Asian Fit model is a slightly different cut too, a little bit shorter, but I don't have one to compare it to, unfortunately. So the Uranium Collection is going to come in a few different options. You have the Jawbreaker, the Radar EV, the FLAC 2.0, and it also comes in the Sliver, which is a lifestyle frame. And the Sliver comes with the Prism Daily Polarized, which is uh, sort of a higher-end lens, which puts it at a pretty high price point for a lifestyle frame. Uh, I probably would have preferred black or something like that to keep the price point down, but that's the lens that they've added. So comparing it to the old radar, again, it has sort of the hammer stems, which are very flat, so you're going to have a, a very similar fit. But what's going to happen is this area up here is going to be raised up a bit, so you don't really see the bar at all. Doing the traditional radar, right here, you can even see some light leak up here as well as seeing the frame fairly clearly, especially if you look down. Whereas on the new extended vision radar, you look down, yeah, you'll see a little bit of the bar, but you have to look down pretty far. Any sort of normal uh, facing is going to be pretty much fine. Now comparing it to like the M2, which is more of a um, follow-up to the M frame, you're going to have sort of a tighter fit with the M2 just because you have uh, flatter stems on the radar. It gives it a little bit more flex, whereas this is going to be a little bit tighter. Um, it's more of a cylindrical stem design versus a flat one. So it's just a slightly different fit. Nothing too crazy, but... So then we finally get down to the Jawbreaker, which is the really new frame this uh, year. It's not just a successor to an existing model. And what this is, is actually more of a continuation of the eye shade than anything else. And not just because it's the full frame shield frame lens, but because of what's going on with the stems. So with the eye shade, there was sort of a divot system which would allow the stems to go in and out and sort of pressure fit into place. With switch lock, that's kind of changed a little bit and become a little bit more sophisticated. So instead of just a pressure fit, which could become loose over time, it actually has a locking mechanism. So this hinge right here will go right up, and the frame will go in and out. It will actually come out completely if you want. And there's three different settings that you can have here. So based on how you want your fit, you just align the groove with the divot, pop that into place, and now you have a lens that is much longer than the fully retracted position. 
go up again, push it in, down, and now you have your original look. So depending on either your helmet or whether you want to just have a sort of a, a deeper wrap, I usually prefer ones that wrap a little bit more. Um, so things like the, the Madman, which I reviewed, were nice because they had a very deep wrap. So this is the Tour de France edition with the matte smoke white and prism road lens. And a lot of these are going to be coming with the prism lenses as they're moving heavily into very specialized uses for these. So uh, obviously being a cycling frame, the prism road would make perfect sense for that. And going back to the switch lock, the original one was the jawbone, which became the new racing jacket. And since it had two separate lenses, it was easy to have a pivot on either, either side and have the jaw just swing in independent directions. However, being a fixed frame, this lens has to come out but still remain attached at both sides. So what they've done is they've added a two-way pivot here where not only does it swivel like a wheel, it actually rocks side to side. So it's almost a spherical pivot point. So as it comes out, it actually kind of flexes in on itself and it's not fixed to just a single axis. So what you do is you flip up the nose bombs here. So this goes up, this pin comes out of the way, and then you can just open up the frame and replace the lens. I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to risk dropping it as I'm trying to explain things. But then basically just hook that back over, push the nose bombs down, and you're back in business. A couple other ones we have here. Uh, we do have the Redline Edition, which only comes in Asian fit. So if you want this one, which I think looks really nice, um, you'd almost think it was a Ducati or a Ferrari Edition, but uh, I really like the black and red accents because those two colors, I think, just work well with almost everything. This has the positive red lens, so it does differ from the Prism Road, mainly because positive red has a neutral base, whereas this has the specialized Prism base. And But they both have positive red iridium, so from the outside, they're both going to look similar. They're just going to have a vastly different viewing properties when you're wearing them. I also have the Uranium Collection, which is going to match the Radar EV quite nicely. And again, this says Prism Road because these are cycling glasses, so they're going to basically use the prism that matches that. Uh, when you move into the radars and the flak jackets, you're going to have a wide variety of things. So you're going to have the prism baseball, both the infield and the outfield. You're also going to have the uh, prism daily and things like that. So a lot of different prism ones for every different possible scenario. There's even a whole line of goggle prism lines or prism lenses specifically for prism snow and things like that. So they really uh, tried to target specific frequencies which uh, make colors jump out at you. So it's going to mute some, it's going to bring out some, and it's not just a standard graph. It's actually going and picking out certain frequencies which is going to boost and then mute the rest of them. So you have a very customized, unique experience when looking through the prism lens. And one other thing to notice is the new design of the bag. So as we see, as of like a year ago, they don't put the foam inside the cases anymore. What they're intending you to do is put all of your spare lenses actually inside the bag. So you notice there's a flap here, which is not to seal the bag, but actually to expose a new accessory lens pouch. You can place your lens in there, put your glasses in, and then have everything in one package. So that's pretty much it. We have the Flak 2.0, the Radar EV, and the Jawbreaker. Uh, they all hover around the $200 price point. The Flak 2.0 will be a little bit less. The Jawbone will either be at that or a little bit more based on polarization, prism lenses, things like that. So I believe they're well worth it. Um, I really like the Jawbreaker just because of the aggressive design. A lot of the technology that allows you to extend and customize this however you need. As well as a lot of the frame colors that's come in. I decided to just uh, put all of the ones that I liked in a virtual shopping cart just as a uh, torture myself and there's like nine different colors or nine different options that I wanted so um, no way I'm going to be able to get all of them but it's really kind of cool that they didn't just come out with a lot of you know root beer or black frames everything is like red line or uranium or navy bright orange retina burn there's just all sorts of crazy stuff out there so um Definitely check them out if you get a chance. They are very comfortable, very functional, and uh, they 
really are some solid releases into the sports frames, which are, of course, one of my favorite things. So as always, have a nice day, and thanks.